Once again, I find my Passaic River adventures leading me to Kearney, New Jersey. This time I head inland across Passaic Ave to visit the old bat factory which exploded in 1986, killing two workers and completely leveling the main building. For some history on the subject, I asked WFMU radio celebrity, Weird New Jersey contributor, and lifelong Kearney resident, X-Ray Burns, to brief me on his remembrances of the site. I grew up just a few short blocks from here on Alexander Avenue and attended Washington School, which is above these apartments, from kindergarten through eighth grade. So we would always come down here uh, to play when this was an active factory, long before we knew it was a baseball bat factory. Uh, we could always find something interesting to play with in the garbage. And uh, more often than not, we'd come down in packs of five or six kids and just sort of wander around, see what type of trouble we could get into. Uh, if we didn't find anything interesting to play with, we would go through the dumpsters and the garbage cans and come away with a piece of sharpened metal or a, a roll of toxic paper or insulation or something. More often than not, we would provoke the employees into chasing us. That was the, that was the sport. You know. Did they ever catch you? Once or twice. They uh, would just scoot you along and t threaten to call your parents, which was always a big threat back in the day, as opposed to the Congolium Nairn factory where they would shoot at you with salt guns. It was a, basically a shotgun or an air rifle filled with a, uh, salt pellets. Now, I was never called victim. Can I buy a cigarette of you? Yeah, man, here you just have one. Thanks. It's better yet. Good luck. Yep. I never fell victim to the uh, salt gun, but my friend uh, Pat <laughs> repeatedly shot with the salt gun really? on the backside, yes. <laughs> and did he have big welts from it? Oh yeah, well there was little pellets in his skin. I mean, oh, it right. hurt. It went through his pants, through his jeans. Jesus. Yep. In uh, 1986, I had moved out of the area at that time, but there was a tremendous explosion, uh, midnight, one in the morning, something like that, that you could hear from the other end of town where I was living. Uh, I was out at a dance club that night, uh, I guess I was about 17 or 18 years old, no, it was 1986, I was a little older than that. Uh, and when I came home, uh, my mother informed me that my father had to go down to see the explosion. So I got in the car, came down to witness this place burn, and uh, it was burning pretty good. They had the apartments up here evacuated, the street was blocked off down here, so about as close as you could get was halfway through this ShopRite parking lot over here. But you could see the flames going into the sky. Uh, the roof eventually fell in in parts. And uh, at some point, projectiles began to shoot in the sky because apparently these baseball bats that they manufacture here are filled with compressed gas. I've heard other people say they were filled with plastic, but whatever they were filled with, when it was superheated, it turned these baseball bats into projectiles, which were shooting this way across the Passaic River, and more interestingly, this way towards the heavily populated General Kearney apartments. Um, the reason my father was called down here is because of his, he was the president of the Board of Education, and he had to open Washington School to allow the apartment residents to get in there, because they had to use the bathroom, and they couldn't stand out in the night air all that long. Um, though I, it was a kind act, to let the people in the building. Uh, subsequent reports indicated that they had used all the lockers in the elementary school for toilets, <laughs> and they stole the Washington School marching band instruments. At one point, this was the industrial center of Carter. It was all based along the Passaic River, and from East Newark, basically up to Bergen Avenue, and a few other spots along the Passaic River, all heavily industrial, there no residential, uh, no retail, even the supermarket wasn't here, uh, the Kmart wasn't here, um, and the history of this strip here goes back, as you know, to the Clark Threadmills, uh, which had been operating since the time of the Civil War, from what I understand. They were linen spoolers. They, had, they were in Scotland and England and Ireland at the time of the Industrial Revolution, so when that business moved over here, they followed in droves. But here in Kearney, a lot of the old Scottish and Irish ladies tend to go a little loopy, a little soft in the nugget uh, as they get older. And you've heard the expression, mad as a hatter, uh, which they say people went mad from working with the solvents and the dyes and the mercuries that they would put in the felt in order to manufacture hats. Well, the theory here in Kearney is that a lot of these elderly people developed dementia over the years because so many of them had been employed in the Clark Thread Mills or other industrial 
factories in the area long before the days of OSHA, long before the days uh, of testing anything to see how bad it was. You just made it, you made it on the cheap. So that's a, and I, I can tell you from personal experience that of the 20 or 30 elderly women in my church that I attended when I was growing up, fully four fifths of them went off their nugget when they got older. And it wasn't Alzheimer's, it was just a general dementia. And what was the mood like on the night of the explosion when you came down here? The mood of the spectators was jubilant because everybody loves the fire. I mean, you know, the people who don't have to fight the fire um, really just show up to see it burn. It's always been that way. It has an effect on people. Same reason women go swoon at hangings and such in the old days. Some find it even a, a sexual experience to watch a fire. I believe the two that were killed was later determined died in the actual explosion itself as opposed to being trapped in the building in the flames. Once that becomes uh, clear, then they just try and control the fire instead of launching any life-saving operations that may jeopardize the fireman. The roof, as I say, a portion, portion of the roof uh, collapsed, sent a big shower of sparks into the sky. It seemed to me that just when they would get one section of the fire out, it would pop up somewhere else. Or not out, but under control. It would pop up somewhere else, and they, it was like whack-a-mole, little bits of fire going up into the sky. Uh, the smokestack, as you can see, largely undamaged because it's a masonry structure. Uh, although they say that was where the source of the explosion was, I believe, in the furnace area itself. And uh, oof, as they say. But all of these smokestacks in this area, when I was a kid, you could sit in your classroom at Washington School and watch them just belch this awful, thick, black smoke. We didn't think anything of it. Today, nobody would live within 20 miles of that. We knew when this one smokestack we could see from our classroom would belch smoke, it was almost 3 o'clock and time to go home. I hear clicking sounds. It almost at first I thought it was liquid falling, but it's a distinct mechanical clicking. And then off in the distance, there's somebody banging with a bat or a shovel, perhaps. Oh, yeah, a deer. Yeah, that's right, deer. But then off in the distance, there's a banging. Hmm. That's the trailer I was talking about where someone lives in there. <laughs> it's like a home within a home. Nice. And I saw a woodchuck. <laughs> Greasy motherfucker. Yeah, I'll bet. Nothing uh, like a little machine oil yeah. on my woodchuck. There was one building, which I've never learned the use for, we called it the toaster. You went in this warehouse, and it was high. I mean, it's one of the taller buildings there. And when you were inside it, there were four rooms that looked like slots in a toaster. They went all the way up to the ceiling, like 150 feet, 200 feet. And they had some type of coils all along the walls, from the ceiling to the floor. I imagine they were refrigerated coils. Uh, but to us as kids, it looked like a giant toaster. We called it the toaster. And uh, we would go in there, walk through, find the secret little office, a room of maybe 16 by 20 feet. Every inch of the wall space was covered with uh, softcore pornography, like Playboy and Penthouse centerfolds that had been glued there and laminated there. And as young boys, we thought that was the, the real deal. You know. And this is part of the Congo? This the is part Congo, yes. The Congo. Which, again, short for Congolium, but we called it the Congo because it was much like a jungle, you know. And we would go down there until somebody would shoot at us with the salt guns or, or chase us. Most times they didn't care what we did, you know. X-ray burns, Kearney, New Jersey.